there are going to be some changes to the 2021 exams and they're going to be different between subjects and this is because of all the time that you missed of school and in reality the time you're going to miss off school this year with minor coughs which are really nothing and the lack of testing getting you back into school so what are those changes Ofqual did a big consultation and they asked you and teachers and anyone that was interested in education what they thought about these subjects. Now I try and share any Ofqual consultations that you can participate in and that affect you um, as widely as I can on social media. So if you want to be able to have your say, if you want to be able to have your say to Ofqual and directly influence what happens to your education then make sure you're either, well I'd say Ofqual pretty boring to follow on social media follow me on social media and I will try and get these things out to you as much as I possibly can when they came up but however previously off call has done a consultation about what changes should take place to the 2021 exams considering the time that you've missed off school now this is not an easy subject because schools teach things in different order there is actually no requirement for a school to start at the beginning and teach it to the end um sometimes they start with teaching topic 10 because they think it's the easiest if you're doing if you're starting your GCSEs in year nine and maybe you don't have a specialist teacher maybe they teach all the biology first or maybe they will teach like all the, the the algebra first and then move on to the the geometry instead of teaching it in spec order so schools do not have to teach stuff in spec order which means the off call can't just say oh we're going to get rid of topic 10 we're going to get rid of topic 12 we're going to get rid of topic 15 whatever those topics were because some schools might have started with those which have put those schools at a massive disadvantage because they've taught a topic that isn't going to be on the exam anymore so it's not as easy or as simple as of course saying oh we're just going to ignore that bit of the curriculum because that wouldn't be fair to all schools so they've tried to come up with something that would be fair to all schools but is not necessarily fair across all subjects now some of these changes i think are fair some of these changes i think are not fair some of them reduce the amount of content you had to learn some of them just change the way that the content is examined it's very different between subjects some subjects are going to get a lot easier and some subjects are going to be harder because of this um but of course I've tried to do the best that they can and in these times that's kind of all we can actually, anyone can actually do the, the best we can. Across the levels there's very little difference so any change that's been made to GCSE has also been made to A level. Um, it's the difference between the subjects so if I say maths I do mean GCSE maths and A level maths and starting off with math there is no change to this at all you still have to sit the same number of papers and learn the same amount of content and um there is no change to maths now i understand this because schools are going to teach stuff in different orders um however it does make maths even harder than it was before because you have to learn the same amount of content now go and watch any of my house revised videos the way to do this is little and often little and often after a lesson go and do a whole set of questions on that um because there's a lot of maths to learn for science gcse and a level they are not reducing the amount of content but they've changed the requirements in the classroom ever so slightly so previously there were a set of required practicals a set of core practicals that you had to do in class and you did them in class and the bit that you didn't see was the head of the exams officer or the head of school signed off and said every single person has done every single practical that is the truth um they've taken that requirement away so you do not have to do the required practicals anymore the school have said that you can do you can see a teacher demoing the practical of it um which especially with social distancing in place if you're at the back of the class and you can't all gather around a bench watching a teacher demo a practical is actually a really really hard thing if you want in any way to try and understand it to the level that you need to be able to answer practical questions about it in the exam or you can watch videos about it now I've been making practical videos for years now I have these already up my website 
up on YouTube just waiting for you they're free everyone can access those these are much better ways in my opinion of learning practicals that you can't actually do because I take you through the whole thing and I take you through exam questions and run the graphs and you see it kind of like from my perspective so if when your teacher demoed it to you didn't really see it or you didn't really understand or you were away for that lesson then I've got all the videos ready and waiting for you because practical questions are 15% of your exam grade that hasn't changed there are still going to be practical questions in the exam they're still going to be the same type of things like look for the errors in this how would you change this what improvements could you make to this which if you haven't actually done the practical yourself are going to be really really hard questions for you to answer however practicals are my absolute favorite thing which is why i've got so many videos and the books about doing the practicals as well where i have just written loads of questions about practicals and sort of practical questions you would get in the exam so for maths lots and lots of questions for science i've, I've basically got you covered now for english one thing was announced and then because a lot of poets on social media got very angry about it that thing got unannounced and changed to something different um so previously you didn't have to do the unseen poetry bit but this made a lot of poets on twitter very angry anyway that was the previous change now it has changed to something different now you only have to answer three out of the four sections so you either have to answer questions on and study a 19th century novel or a modern text now the few schools because there will be a few schools that have done this who have already studied both the 19th century novel and the modern text in year 9 or year 10 these schools are going to be at a disadvantage which is why I've called initially said the unseen poetry because that would be fair to everyone the here they are gambling that schools have left one of the books to year 11 now the majority of schools will have done that but I'm sure there are some schools out there who have studied both of these texts already and it is going to be unfair but in the exam you do not have to answer questions on both texts you just answer questions on one text so they reduce the amount of content you have to learn and they reduce the amount of work that you have to do in the exam so completely different to maths and completely different science in my opinion they could have kept this and they could have made your lives easier so instead of requiring you to remember all of the exams they could have just given you the anthology in the exam that would have been equally fair to everybody it would have reduced the the burden on you having to learn so much and it would have you know not changed how much you had to study in the exam it would have been fair to everybody um but I'm not on Ofqual and I did fill in the form but nobody actually asked my opinion on English. Strange. For geography, students no longer actually have to leave the classroom and go and do the fields work. Now again, this is unfair to the students that have already done their four days of fields work because they've missed four days of learning that they could have done something else on um but you still have to answer fields work questions in the exam so students that have done the four days of um, fields work are going to have an advantage in the exam because they've done that fields work but they're going to have a disadvantage because the four days that they had of school in year 10 maybe um they could have sent doing something else so again with geography they've tried to make it fair but i don't necessarily think they have made it very fair for PE they're reducing the number of activities not PE person whatever you want to call it that you're going to be assessed on from three down to two now I think this is actually pretty fair because it's saving everyone time it is unlikely that anyone would have like saved like done all of their activities in year nine and year ten um it's reducing the amount of skills that you have to be assessed on so reducing the number of activities in PE I think this is actually a pretty fair one again for art I think they've been pretty fair for art you only have to do one project one personal art 
thing. Um, and the way that they did it before is they released the topics as kind of like pre exam assessments um, and they're just not going to release the second one so nobody will have had the chance to do this before nobody will have done this in year 10 nobody will have done this early so if art they've actually come up with a very very fair way of reducing the amount of work that you have to do for history they're reducing the number of subjects that you have to study so one whole unit like a quarter of the GCSE they've just taken that away you don't have to study that anymore which is actually pretty fair because it is unlikely that you would have finished the whole of GCSE history before lockdown and a quarter of the, the course whichever unit your school decides not to do you just don't have to do that anymore so you only have to do three units instead of the four units now this again is very very fair it is unlikely everyone would have finished GCSE history already so I think for history, you're actually going to find you have a lot of time to revise. Unlike maths, where you still have to learn everything. History, you only have to learn three quarters of the content now. And in the exam, you can pick which subjects or which areas you answer exam questions on. So I think that's a really nice, easy fair way that they've done it for you. Loads of subjects aren't really changing or are changing in similar ways to the ones I've mentioned. And you know, if you chose history instead of geography, you've got to learn three quarters of a GCSE, whereas in geography you might have wasted four days going on a field trip that you didn't need to go on. I'm sure the field trip was a lot of fun. But between option subjects, I don't necessarily think that they've come up with the fairest way to do this. And especially with the core subjects like maths, where you still have to learn everything, there's basically been absolutely no changes at all. Um, and for English, they've made things you know, slightly unfair and they've missed maybe the obvious ways to make things easier for you. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way and we can do this. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.